bit of a field trip this afternoon. This steam traction engine belongs to a friend of mine, Mr. Jim Mead, and uh, we're going to do a little work on it. So we got to pull a part off it, and I'll show you what that is. This valve rod, <clears throat> where it goes into the steam chest, is worn, and the gland, the brass gland, is also worn, and the uh, packing won't stay in it. It blows it out. Uh, this is a 19, 19 Frick Eclipse, eight and a half by ten cylinder, and this thing, when it's breaking sod with a 10 bottom plow at the shows, it's really something to hear. And uh, with those kind of steam pressures, uh, the packing glands get really critical. So we're going to rebuild this gland and make a new rod for it. So that's what we got to remove. Uh, this is the packing gland, uh, this is the end that goes into the steam chest, and uh, this part goes on here, and this is the packing material, which is actually a rope type seal, a square section rope, and you wind it up in there, and it actually goes on first. And then this has a about a 45 degree bevel on it, which matches the 45 degree bevel up in there, and it sort of crushes the seal material down against the uh, the shaft and seals the steam. Well, this is the 1919 part, and as far as I can tell, it's wrought iron. And what they used to do. Uh, is sort of cold work the surface. Uh, the railroads would actually take uh, a lower priced steel or iron, uh, wrought iron, and they put it in the lathe and they had a tool that looked like a, a knurling tool, only it had f hard flat rollers on it and they'd run it down with a little bit of angle on it. They'd run it down with a steady rest against it in the lathe and they would actually uh, cold work the surface to make it a little tougher and harder. I don't know if that was the case here but this seal would not stay tight it would not hold the packing in it and now we can see why. It's uh, 13 16 diameter and down here it's probably a sixteenth of an inch worn where the packing goes so this is kind of an hourglass shape and this little part here, which actually uh, becomes the bearing for this sliding in and out, uh, according to the print, should have about a, a 12 to 15 thousandths uh, clearance sliding fit in here. And as you can see here, it's got about probably an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths wear. So instead of relying on this as the bearing it was having to bear itself against the packing and of course with the hourglass shape running back and forth no matter how much you tightened it it tend to ram the packing out and it, it would just never stay tight so the project is to replace this it's kind of simple um, it's 13 sixteenths uh, instead of being seven eighths when you're working on this really old machinery, uh, line shafts and, and, and old machinery, you'll find that the shafting is all a sixteenth of an inch under nominal size. And the reason for this is it's sort of like when you buy a 2 by 4 today. Uh, you pay for a 2 by 4 but you're only getting like an inch and three eighths by uh, three and a half or something like that because 
of the milling the uh, material off of it to get to, to the finished dimension and you get of course charged for it but you don't get it. it, it turns into sawdust. So <clears throat> I uh, was trying to decide what would be the best uh, material to use here and uh, I talked to Adam Booth uh, about uh, hydraulic cylinder rod uh, because that's what he deals with on a daily basis and he gave me a supplier name of a supplier where I could start looking for this and of course being 13 16 so I didn't think there'd be a chance in the world but there it is hard chromed hydraulic rod 13 16 right on the money so what we got to do here is turn this down to three quarter and uh, cut the threads here and uh, and this is another thing you, you got to watch when you're uh, working with old stuff because it's very likely to be a non-standard thread because it was made before the standardization of threads but that right there is a 10 so it's 3 quarter 10 not a bad size these are the nuts that go on one nut goes on then this is the spacer this is the end that the, the slide valve of the steam engine goes on. So it's got jam nuts on either side of this and the slide valve has two bosses that uh, this sets down into. So it has just a little bit of clearance in there against the ends. And uh, so we got to thread that and then on the other end, I'll flip this around quick so you can see it. This is the easiest end. We'll probably start on that first so if we screw it up we got lots of material here we can start over again but this is just a this this end is where it goes into the eccentric on the steam engine and uh, it's, it's got an adjustment here and of course on this end is where you adjust the valve uh, to even up the lap across the ports so that's why it has to be adjustable and that all has to be adjusted after it gets back together again with a, uh, a tram on the engine. So we'll get started on this. We'll get this uh, in the lathe and get it lined up and ready to go and then we'll get steam up. This is the actual factory drawing from the Frick company. Uh, I'll give you a still shot of this. Uh, that'll be in better focus and you You can see but it's kind of interesting uh, 928 1911 is the drawing date and this particular drawing is for uh, uh, Some different parts of the valve gear and this is the part that we're making right here and also on the other page the little brass part and this is the new super duper packing material that we got from Garlock we called their their tech guys and they uh, thought this would be the right material to use uh, seeing how we're running pretty high pressure on that Frick engine that's a that's a new uh, uh, boiler uh, from Jonas Stutzman and uh, it's approved for 175 pounds and uh, I think Jim's running 150 on it. So uh, this is the packing material we'll be using. In the drawing, all the dimensions are in fractional form. Uh, the old timers didn't think in terms of thousands and tens of thousands. So I 
converted it to decimal, which is this dimension is inch and five sixteenths. The original part has a reduced diameter here with uh, a half inch uh, at this diameter. So the way we're going to mark that is with the way the old timers did it. You put your dividers right in the slot of the number. Chalk it up a little bit. Inscribe it. Getting along on the setup on this valve rod, I had to change to my smaller chuck because the bigger chuck wouldn't go down that small. This nut here and stud unlocks the stepped pulley from the spindle. turn three without the back gear engaged and we just all run these down in the ballpark just touching there I'd say that's maybe within about five thousandths, which for most things in the old world is about right.
these calipers are set right at three quarter and it just drops over from their own weight. So that's our finished cut. Got the thread cutting tool ground up here and installed in the holder. And this is your basic thread gauge that you need if you're going to cut threads in a lathe. These are all 60 degree angles on here. And uh, the idea is to cut this exactly to grind that exactly at 60 degrees so that your gauge fits on it. And then also when you get the tool in the lathe you can use this to line it up parallel with your work. So we we'll check to make sure that we're right on center first. And then straight with the thread gauge. Check our threading. And this is going to be 10 threads per inch. So we're looking at right there. 10 threads per inch. So we're down in this notch right here. Screw this lead screw into the, the cross slide into the same spot every time, and then feed the compound about 5,000, and it's set at 30 degrees or 29 and a half. And then we're engaging on the line.
just about it, right there. Well, I'd say I'm very pleased with the way that turned out. I was a little concerned about how it would machine with high-speed steel, and it's no problem at all. It's uh, that end turned out fine. Now we got to cut it to length and mark off where the other thread goes.
Here's the finished rod. I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. Only one little bugger thread where I screwed up. Engaging the nut in the wrong place. It's par for the course. And this is a replacement packing gland part. You can see how much it's worn. How much the old one was worn. And so we've got to go down and install it tonight because we've got to load to fire it up and load it onto the flatbed trailer Friday. It's heading for the Canandaigua Steam Show. Here we are back at the Frick installing our valve rod. This is what we got so far. Doesn't seem to be any problems. At this point the packing is installed in here. Four rings of graphite type packing. The gland is pressed back in place. And this nut goes on. And we got plenty of threads, so I think that's about the right amount of packing. 